ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू स्वामी से आई हैव टेकन बर्थ बाय माय ओन विल आई चोज माय मदर आई आल्सो प्रोक्लेम्ड माय अवतार हुड माय सेल्फ आई टुक ए नेम एंड ए फॉर्म एंड केम हियर from the unmanifest in order that man should attain divinity the present avatar of bhagwan baba is the omnipresent one who encompasses this entire universe yes he has taken human form only to redeem mankind it is experience of innumerable devotees that whichever name and form of god they may pray to their prayers reaches bhagwan here are two examples about the unseen divine power of sai one is from shirdi avatar in the other one from parthi avatar a student by name Vaman Bhai Patel went to Shirdi for Sai Nath Darshan. Once he was sitting on the steps of Dwarka Mai, Sai Nath sent him a piece of sugar candy through someone. Moments after he ate it, he received a letter from Mumbai written by his father. The father informed him that he had passed in the SSC examination. He was very happy and thought of offering some sweets to Sai Nath. So in the evening, he went to an innkeeper, got a few ladoos, put them in a box, and brought them to Sai Nath. On seeing him, Sai Nath exclaimed, "Oh, you have come here with ladoos, but on the way, you did not bother about anybody." and now you have come here with box initially woman woman by did not understand the meaning of this statement but later he remembered that while coming to sainath a hungry dog had been following him woman by however did not give him a ladu and later offered the box to baba how will the omnipresent sai a proof of this who is concerned about the welfare of all the other story is from the village of shetfale in sangli district there is a lady named mrs kamal dikshit from an ordinary middle class background living there she gets bhagwan sri sat sai baba's darshan daily in her house at midnight sometimes he plays the flute sometimes imparts instructions and sometimes he teaches bhajans this has been going on continuously for many years once she kept awake all the night but swami did not come so mrs dikshit was very dejected next night when he came she asked him them for not coming the earlier night swami said of course i had come here last night i even ate the naivedya the offering kamal dikshit was surprised swami answered last night while you were waiting for me a bumble bee came into the house it touched the tea from the tea cup and flew away who was it that was myself later by coincidence mrs sarala joshi from pune heard about mrs kamala dikshit mrs joshi personally visited the shetfail village and spent 8 days and nights with mrs dikshit in fact for a person like sarala ji who was used to come first of city life it was real penance to spend 8 days in a village where 
electricity supply was erratic and even fan was not available however due to her intense devotion to swami she stayed there very happily and published the life story of mrs kamal dikshit of shetfale village in a hindi book titled sai charan kamal due to this devotees from all over came to know about this remarkable phenomena sarlati sarla chai has published several books on swami in hindi due to her contribution many people from uttar pradesh and madhya pradesh came to know of swami's life his leelas and his vision in this way she fulfilled her worship through literature yes this is the same sarla thai to whom swami has promised whoever regularly recites my astotari the eight names and the 108 names astotara three times a day as specified by sanatana dharma morning afternoon and evening without fail for one year i fulfill all his tasks that's what bhagwan said in the 21st shloka of the 16th chapter of bhagavad gita the lord has declared these three gates of to hell are destructive of the self lust anger and greed therefore one should abandon these three in fact the shut repos are the six negative qualities of the human nature pose as obstacles in the path of god realization as long as these obstacles exist god does not accept that person as a devotee how will god dwell in a heart which is filled with shut repos shut meaning six repos means enemies only when we discard the negative qualities like anger lust desire greed will our mind attain peace we lose body consciousness our heart will be purified and then god will take his seat in our hearts there are two uh, incidents which narrate how swami destroys negative traits like anger etc in his devotees the first incident is from swami's childhood one day a teacher in class realized that all students were taking down notes excepting satyanarayana so he got angry and said whoever is not writing may stand up satya the present baba stood up the teacher asked why are you not writing innocent satyanarayana satyam baba i know everything that you are teaching and where is the need to write notes the teacher's ego was hurt he penalized satya by asking him to stand up on the bench satya obeyed the teacher but when the class got over the teacher got stuck to his chair and could not get up when another teacher came there to take the next class he understood that this had happened due to the unreasonable punishment given to satya the teacher was asked to withdraw the punishment the moment it was done he was able to get up from the chair his anger and ego were destroyed and from then on he became an ardent devotee of swami the second incident is from mumbai swami promised a devotee that during his next visit to mumbai he would come to the devotee's house and oversee the study circle that was held there but when swami arrived in mumbai there is no indication from him about the visit so the devotee asked the swami about it sai said if i come there everything in that area will get disrupted because the road is narrow and full of shops 
on either side and if i come a huge crowd will gather and this will inconvenience all of you on hearing this the devotee's daughter felt extremely disappointed and then she got angry too next moment swami said daughter seems to be very angry he turned to her and said i will come but do you want my presence for two hours or would you prefer to have me there forever the moment she heard this her anger vanished and her devotion was reawakened who will refuse the gift of swami's presence forever swami kept his word and the devotee experienced his divine presence in the house all the time that's what swami is then bhagwan sri satsai baba wears an ochre robe and an orange pitambara sanyasi also wears orange garb but there is a difference here the sanyasis wear orange clothes clothes as a sign of renunciation of worldly life about himself wearing the orange robe sri satsai says it is only to remove the kashaya k a s h a y a evil feeling and bitterness from the minds of the people i wear this kashaya the akar robes when swami was a child his grandfather the konamarazu would visit the district place and get colorful pieces of apparel for all his grandchildren on his return all the children would rush to select their favorite colors but little sachcha used to prefer to be uh, the last one to take his pick he got more joy in his siblings happiness in 1940 after the declaration of his avatarhood swami started wearing a white robe right until 1946 when kuppam family came to puttaparthi for navratri celebrations in 1946 shrimati radhamma got colored silken robes for swami swami accepted her loving offering and wore robes of different colors for the navratri festival since then he started wearing the ochre robe in those days the crowd there in swami were thin and swami used to tell the devotees today you get to meet me talk to me easily but a day will come when you will see me from a long distance only as an orange dot he also mentioned this in the letter to his brother sri sesh marazu in may 1947 but well, here is an incident from the old times which is very enlightening once a lady who called herself a devotee thought that she should get an orange robe stitched for swami just to fulfill her wish swami asked her to get him a robe she rushed to get it stitched and offered it to swami but by this time there was a change in her attitude ego replaced the joyful state swami asked me to get him a robe he will wear it this egoistic thought kept surfacing in her mind in that frame of mind she went all over puttaparthi and started telling everyone about it on her return to the mandir she witnessed a startling scene the robe offered by her was shredded into festoons and hung all over as she had started speaking to others with an egoistic attitude swami had asked a pair of scissors to have the robe cut into festoons and put all over the lady understood her mistake and also realized that swami had asked her for the robe only to fulfill her wish she fell at his feet and asked her pardon here is a sweet story with reference to mother isharma one swami was at dharmakshetra 
Mumbai and was to leave for Pandarpur. Mother Isharama and a few devotees were with him. Swami asked Mother Isharama, Why don't all of you go and do some sightseeing in Mumbai? In playful anger, she exclaimed, One needs money for that, isn't it? If you give us some money, we'll be able to go. Swami tucked on the other side, seams of the robe, and showing her that the robe did not have any pockets, he said. He said, does this have pockets? From where from can I give you the money? On hearing the dialogue between the mother and the son, everyone burst into laughter. Bhagwan, she said, Sai Baba, is God incarnate and seven qualities of prosperity, glory, knowledge, non-attachment, creation, sustenance and dissolution are present in him. Just by his divine will, he performs many wondrous miracles. Years ago, he was sitting on the sands of the Chitravati with some devotees. He started drawing something with his fingers on the sands. Someone asked, Swami, what are you drawing? He smiled softly and said, Soon a new mandir will be constructed. This is the plan of the mandir. From now on, not from India alone, but thousands of devotees from all over the world will come there. Lakhs of people will come. Puttaparthi will become a very famous pilgrim center. Some of the people who heard it at that time had some doubts. But today, every word that Swami said has turned into reality. Swami has established temples of knowledge, the temples of healing, and has provided drinking water through the water projects to thousands of people, all as a part of His glorious mission. The Chaitanya Jyoti Museum, Purnachandra and Sai Kurund Hall, Hillview Stadium, the beautifully carved idols, the planetarium, the university, and are not these wondrous creations? Yes, they are really wondrous creations, beyond doubt. Bhavan Baba has cured many devotees of serious ailments. He has given rebirth to the dead. While being at one place, in his physical body, he travels to any part of the world in his subtle form to rescue his devotees from the calamities. Let's ponder over one such wondrous deed of Swami. Once a while, in Brandavan Ashram, Swami said to one of his devotees, Dr. Gadia, Yesterday, I had gone to Kampala, Africa to save your parents from a car accident. Kampala is a town in Africa and Dr. Gadia's parents who are residing there met with a serious car, car accident. The car was crushed beyond repair, but both of them survived unhurt. Unhurt! This became possible only due to Swami's grace. And while doing so, Swami's physical form was at Brindavan Ashram in Bangalore. Whatever Swami told Dr. Gadia was later confirmed by his family at Kampala. Sairam, we'll meet in the next session. Sairam.